Hello, my name is Crystal Olson and I am Seattle College's District Environmental Health and Safety Manager. This is your COVID-19 awareness training for students returning to campus during phase one of Washington's COVID-19 recovery plan. By now we have all likely heard from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Washington's Department of Health, and King County Health Authorities that we all have responsibilities to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities during the COVID-19 pandemic. So your intention to this requirement to return to campus is necessary for the protection of all people within our college community. In this video, we will review the phase one return to campus activity requirements, as well as communication and planning expectations. Let's start with getting to campus. Seattle and King County has issued a local health office directive that says King County residents must wear a cloth face covering. Starting May 18th, we must wear a cloth face covering while we are at any low indoor or outdoor public space where it may be difficult to maintain a minimum of six feet of physical distance from someone we do not live with. Everyone is strongly urged to wear face coverings in places such as retail stores, grocery stores, restaurant takeout and food businesses, buses, light rail, and other public forms of transportation. A face covering is not needed when you are outside walking, exercising, sitting at the park, or other areas that you are able to regularly stay two arms length away from other people. This mandate is for cloth face coverings, not for N95 or medical grade masks. Such coverings may include a cloth face mask, scarves, or bandanas, but must fit over the nose and mouth. It is important to reserve medical grade surgical masks and N95 respirators for healthcare workers and people who have special health needs. Some people do not need to follow this directive, including anyone with a disability that makes it hard for them to wear or remove a face covering, anyone who is deaf and moves their face and mouth to communicate, anyone who has been advised by a medical professional to not wear a face covering because of personal health issues, anyone who has trouble breathing, is unconscious or unable to remove the face covering without help. Children under the age of two years should never wear cloth face coverings. Children under the age of 12 years should only wear a face covering while in direct supervision of a parent or caregiver to ensure it is worn safely. Individuals are strongly urged to comply with this directive. There is no criminal, civil, or financial penalty for failing to wear a face covering in these settings. However, Washington State requires through the Phase 1 COVID-19 Recovery Plan that all students, employees, and visitors who arrive to campus must wear cloth face coverings at all times while on site. Failure to comply may result in revoking permission to access campus during Phase 1 operations. Here is what the Surgeon General says about how simple it is to make your own cloth face covering out of common household items. Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps with items you can find around the house, like an old scarf, a bandana or a hand towel, or you can make a face covering out of an old t-shirt. Fold it to the middle from the bottom, fold it to the middle from the top, fold it again to the middle from the bottom, and again from the top, and then two rubber bands, one on one side and one on the other side. Then you fold either side to the middle and you have yourself cloth face covering. It's that easy. To protect yourself while wearing cloth face coverings, your mask should cover your nose and your mouth at all times. Always wash your hands with soap before and after putting on and taking off the mask and before and after adjusting the face covering. If soap and water is not available, use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Please be sure to change your face covering when it gets moist and wash your face covering preferably after each use, but at least daily. 
Before you come to campus and as you leave, you will be expected to check in and check out using an online questionnaire form. Your instructor will be providing a link to this form where you can access via web browser or mobile device and respond to the daily wellness screening checklist, preferably before you leave home. Please note that we are still learning about this new virus and questions may change according to the updated information or requirements from local health officials. You will also need to use this link to check out and log relevant information for confidential contact tracing. This is required for all employees and students who access campus during phase one of the COVID-19 recovery plan. If you're not able to access the online questionnaire form from home, you can respond to the questionnaire at the campus entry point check-in station. During phase one of the COVID-19 recovery plan, you will be expected to measure your temperature daily before coming to campus. And if you have an oral body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit or more, do not come to campus. You will not be allowed access. Please know that building access will be limited to one or a few doors where the campus will have set up a check-in station where you must check in daily to receive clearance to be on campus. You should also exit campus by the same means. Do not stray from on campus scheduled tasks and locations. Do not linger on campus or study or mingle. Your purpose on campus at this time should be for in-class activities only. You should prop promptly exit campus after completing these assigned tasks. At all times while on campus, all persons must maintain a minimum of six feet distance from any other individual and wear your cloth face covering. Your instructor will be keeping a daily attendance log and document by roll call. Again, this is for contact tracing. I know we are significantly changing your education experience, but please be patient and cooperative. These efforts are for the protection of you and your peers, while the King County area continues to experience significant levels of community spread with COVID-19. We politely remind you to practice good respiratory etiquette, to wash your hands frequently, and don't touch your face. Please avoid the aggregation of groups. Even just a few people should not be congregating in this phase. And here is why. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one meter and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person to person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Here is a visual representation of droplet transmission. This is the way the novel coronavirus transmits from person to person. And this is why we continue to ask you to wash your hands, to practice good respiratory etiquette, and to avoid touching your face. Recall that the aerosolized droplets are expected to travel up to three feet away from the individual. So by maintaining a good six feet from all people while in public environments, you are preventing the spread of infection of the novel coronavirus. Seattle College's health and safety team has evaluated the current student exposure risk to COVID-19 using the Occupational Safety and Health Administration and Department of Health guidelines. 
considering that your instructional activities for spring and summer 2020 are those that do not require contact with people known to be or suspected to be infected with COVID-19, nor does it involve frequent close contact with the general public, your student exposure risk has been significantly reduced to categorize you in the lower, the lowest exposure risk category. This exposure risk category does not require additional personal protective equipment for infection control. However, you must continue to utilize the personal protective equipment where applicable for the regular hazards associated with the industry and tasks at hand. Please remember to always wash your hands before and after putting on and taking off gloves or face coverings and before eating, drinking, or smoking. Please wash your hands upon campus entry and wash them immediately after leaving class. If washing with soap and water is not feasible, a hand sanitizer may be used to control the spread of infection. Please remember to stay home if you are sick. Any student or employee who has symptoms of acute respiratory illness, such as a fever, cough, or shortness of breath, they must stay home and not to come to campus until free of symptoms for at least 72 hours without the use of medicine as recommended by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Remember to inform your instructor so they can plan to accommodate your absences. If symptoms begin to appear while you're on campus, immediately inform your instructor and leave campus. Go home and contact your healthcare provider. If you do not have a healthcare provider, but experience COVID-like symptoms, you may call the King County Call Center to seek guidance. Their number is 206-477-3977. If at any time you were confirmed positive for COVID-19 and had a campus presence within 48 hours that symptoms appeared, we will respond with thorough disinfection activities of the space and contact tracing to inform any students or employees that may have potentially been exposed. Remember, if you've maintained six feet of distance from your peers, you have not been potentially exposed. Simply passing a person in the hallway is not considered an exposure event either. The identity of the confirmed patient must be kept confidential, so I want to explain the procedure now for how to confidentially report a confirmed COVID case. If you are confirmed with COVID-19, you will need to inform the college by emailing healthandsafety at seattlecolleges.edu. Simply state that you have tested positive for COVID-19 while undertaking on-campus activities. Please provide your name, email address, and phone number as you did for the campus check-in so that we can respond accordingly. You do not need to inform your instructor of your diagnosis. If you have a confirmed case in your household, you will need to self-isolate and monitor for symptoms for 14 days. Do not come to campus, but inform your instructor that they should plan for your absence. Your instructor's absentee policy is expected to be flexible for the COVID-19 pandemic considerations. At times like this, we are all struggling with the sweeping lifestyle changes we have had to endure. As such, it is critically important to exercise good health and hygiene practices that include attention spent to our mental health as well. Some simple ways to invest in your mental health include going for a walk with someone in your household, doing a video call with someone you love, or acknowledging your feelings or frustrations or even fears with others that you trust and looking for levity in this situation. If you need more help, check out our college website. There are support resources out there and available to you and your college community. With that, I want to thank you for taking the time to review this presentation with me today. Thank you for your patience, cooperation, and diligence in this evolving pandemic lifestyle. I know you have been working hard to manage this new world we are all struggling to adjust in and I am proud to see what you have become. I am proud to be a part of this college community. Stay healthy and be safe. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people 
It's what we refer to when we ask people to say at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or infect you. We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov.